dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are preparing to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Today, I am here to help you all in preparation towards Christmas. Before looking at how we can prepare ourselves, let us look at how God prepared the world for the birth of Christ. Today, the passage that we are taking is from the genealogy of Jesus. And the topic is the unusual way in which God works. We see the presence of five women in the genealogy of Jesus. The presence of women in the Jewish community was something that was pushed to the edges. Something that was not considered important or relevant. And here, the same irrelevant according to the world is made relevant in the genealogy of Jesus. Be having a presence in the genealogy of Jesus means having a presence in the DNA of Jesus, in the genes of Jesus, in the lineage of Jesus. And here there are four women. Jesus is perfect. Jesus is son of God. Jesus is God himself. But here you see the kind of people he has included in his lineage. Let's come to the topic right. First women we find is Tamar. Tamar was the wife of the son of Judah. Her husband died and she was supposed to receive a child through the brother of her husband. This was the law of Leviate. But did it happen? It did not happen because her husband's brother did not do the cooperation in that way and it did not happen. She persisted. She even acted as a prostitute and she received a child. Now, such a woman, she would have been judged, misjudged by the world, but the Lord includes her here. Her persistence her persistence for the right, her persistence to receive what God has promised was great. How many of us have that persistence to receive what God has promised? That trust, that faith, that belief in the promises of God. He's told that he's to, to give me a child, he will give me a child. Okay, second is Rahab. Rahab was again a prostitute who was living at the edges, fringes of the city Jericho. She was living on the wall. She was not fit enough to live in the city. Such a woman we see who was instrumental in safeguarding the whole nation of Israel where the spies who were sent to Jericho in order to investigate the place, they found refuge and fortress with her. Someone who was vulnerable, someone who was useless to the society. She was so useful that she saved two lives that night. And the Lord promised her safety. Before she could save them, she has professed faith in God. She said, I know both of you are coming from a place which is guarded by your God, who is the true God. He is going to defeat us. We are going to be devastated, destroyed by him because he's standing for you. I, we know the kind of things he has done for you. The way he has stood for you in Egypt against the pharaohs. So therefore, we are all afraid. That kind of thing she spoke. And finally, we see the Lord promising her. The Lord promising her safety. Not only safety. Not only dignity, but more than safety and dignity, a place in the lineage of Jesus. She becomes the mother of Boaz, who later becomes the great grandfather of David, who is in whose lineage Jesus is born. So therefore, dear brothers and sisters, let us stop this reflection till Rahab today. Tomorrow we will continue. But these two characters for today, Tamar and Rahab, speak to us this great truth that we shall not judge anybody. We shall not blame anybody. If God can include them, 
into the lineage of his only son who are we henceforth no one is bad enough for me not to forgive them no one is so evil that i cannot forgive them or that i cannot include them into my fold as a church going christian as a believer in christ i am supposed to do just and righteousness to everybody and also to stand as a symbol of truth and forgiveness and inclusivity amen